While most parts can be manufactured using standard 2D and 3D toolpaths, there is significant value and efficiency in using 3 plus 2, or positional multi-axis, strategies to make parts that would otherwise require several setups, like this gantry upright. I'll be programming this upright in the context of an assembly, so first I'll need to locate the component by double-clicking on it in the workspace and following the hash marks under the components in my browser. I'll activate the upright component so all the geometry I create is nested under this component, and then right-click and isolate so just the upright is visible. While it was optional to model in fixtures while programming 2D and 3D toolpaths, it's much more important in multi-axis because collisions are more likely when the part is constantly reorienting in the machine. So, I'm going to choose a fixture to use, model my stock, and then insert that fixture into the design. I have a Raptor dovetail vise along with the dovetail design specs from the manufacturer to use while designing the stock body around the upright. First, I'll create a new sketch using this face of the upright as the sketch plane. The first step is sketching a 10 inch by 16 inch rectangle to represent the block of stock. Then I'll use the borehole on the upright to position the stock around the upright. Now I'm ready to start sketching the dovetails based on the manufacturer's specifications, starting with the general shape of the dovetails and adding constraints and dimensions as I go. To learn the basics of sketching, refer to the Create Component video in the Mechanical Assemblies path. Those basic sketch principles are what I'm applying here to create the dovetails as defined in the manufacturing drawings. All the sketch edges are black, indicating that the sketch is fully constrained. I can hit Stop Sketch to exit the sketch environment and select the Extrude command to start making some solid geometry. I'll select the closed sketch profile, and rather than starting right from the sketch plane, I'll add an offset of 50 thousandths so that my stock body begins 50 thousandths away from the upright body. Then I'll extrude to the opposite face of the upright, adding another offset of 50 thousandths. Finally, I want to change the operation to new body to make sure I'm creating a stock body. I'll hit OK, and the stock body with dovetails is generated. Next, I need to add a locating slot to the bottom of the dovetails to line up with the locating pin on the dovetail vise. I'll refer to the manufacturing specs again to define the size of the slot, and then I'll create an extruded cut from the bottom of the dovetail to the bottom of the stock. I have a Raptor dovetail vise, and Raptor vices are available in the Samples Projects in Fusion 360. I'll navigate to the CAM Samples Project into the Work Holding folder and then to Raptor Work Holding. I have the RWP 40111, so I'll open the design and save it into the same project and folder as the upright assembly. To insert it into the upright assembly, I'll navigate back to that folder in my data panel, right-click on the Raptor vise, and select Insert into Current Design. Now I'm ready to put the stock and the vise together. I'll use a joint based on the center point of the locating pin and the center point of the radius of the locating slot in the stock. To learn more about what a joint is, how I'm selecting these joint origin locations, and why I need a 180 degree offset, refer to the assemblies and joints video in the mechanical assemblies path. Now I have my stock and fixture modeled in relative to the upright, 
so I'm ready to move into the CAM workspace and create a setup. To create a setup for positional multi-axis machining, I want to keep milling as the operation type. While defining the work coordinate system, I want to align it to how I will be probing or locating the part in my machine. So in this case, I would likely locate the midpoint of the fixture for X and Y, and then use the bottom face of the fixture to define Z. To more easily select off the vise, I'll use the browser to toggle the visibility of the upright and the stock body. I'll define Z and X using the face and the edge on the dovetail portion of the fixture, and then use selected point to define the origin as the top edge of the center hole of the vise. I'll also use the browser tree to select the upright body as the model and select the RWP 40111 bodies as the fixture. In the stock tab, I'll define my stock from solid and use the stock body that I modeled from the workspace or using the browser tree. Finally, in the post-process tab, I'll set the work coordinate system offset value to one. Now my setup is done and I'm ready to start creating operations.